Hello, my name's Cliff Freilich. I'm the Executive Director of Cinema St. Louis, and we're the presenters of the 29th Annual Whitaker St. Louis International Film Festival. We're really happy to be joined by the director of the short Before He Starts, Shin Fang. And the person who's going to be doing the interview uh, is actually one of our co-presenting partners uh, with the Contemporary Art Museum, Michelle Dezember, uh, who is the Director of Learning and Engagement, I wanted to get that right, uh, at CAM. All right, I'm going to turn things over to both of you. Um, have at it. Okay, thank you, Cliff. Um, so it's such a pleasure to be talking to you, Shin, and remind us, where are you calling in from right now? Because I think we're, we have quite the distance between us. So right now I'm calling in from Shenzhen, China. So it's about 13 hours ahead of um, CST. For the time zone? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being with us and thank you for such a beautiful film. It was really such a pleasure to watch and um, really my first question for you is if you can talk about um, how you came to making this film and what was important to you uh, and how you wanted to tell this story. Sure. So I always know this artist, Zhang Hongtu, when I visit the Guggenheim Museum in 2017, because they have, at that time, they have a group show to showing all of the Chinese artists. And I saw Hongtu's um, art piece. Um, it's at, at the corner, and it's kind of like black humor and kind of sarcasm. And they were talking about um, very dark history. So I wrote it down and I reached out to him when I know um, I was going to make a thesis film. And he wasn't really responding to me at the time because he was saying, oh, I don't want someone to follow me. I don't like the idea that someone's having a camera filming me and my private life. But I told him that, oh, why don't we just have a talk over the tea because like we don't actually drink coffee like for Chinese <laughs> people we drink tea so like we should, how about we just talk about this um I feel like I have a lot of things I wanted to learn from you and that's the kind of the start of that film so when I when he um allowing me to be with him um, filming a uh, kind of everything um, he's sort of um, revealing himself and letting me to um, get to know him, get to know the past history that I wasn't um, participate into that. But for the important part of the film is I wanted to um, portray Hong Tu's philosophy and what it meant to be a true artist in a very consumerism world. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to hear you say that there was some resistance from him at first because <laughs> there's actually such a nice um, intimacy that I felt you were able to capture and um, seeing him with his family and you know reminiscing about the past, both some sweeter memories about the poem that his mother gave him, but also some really difficult um, you know, social and personal realities that he had to live through. And so, um, you know, once you got through that sort of hurdle of getting him to gain your trust, how did you negotiate that balance between what is, you know, a pretty, pretty um, challenging and, and difficult history and bringing that into some of the lightness and the, the present moment um, in the way that you told it? How did you kind of strike that balance or find that balance? Right, I think at the first time I was really struggling for that part as well, because that part of history that um, I've learned it through textbook, I've learned it from people telling me, but this is a person that's standing in front of me then telling me that he's mm -hmm. been through that like in his real life. So for me is should I put way more um, to make sure for the history part, but later on, I realized this is not the, a historical thing that I wanted to uh, make. And because mm -hmm. he's already passed through that period and like the, one of the pieces that he made, the Mao series, is actually his um, own therapy to overcome mm -hmm. that difficulty. So then I realized, oh, if he already passed through that period, why should I keep grabbing for that part? Because mm -hmm. that's the part that he, um, it's in the past, it's no longer in the present. So that's why for the film, the title is like before he started to make mm -hmm. whichever project that he wanted to make, I wanted just to focus what's important to him in the present, which is his two 
very cute granddaughters and <laughs> um, he's going to make um I'm sure that he's going to make um, many more new artworks. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was really nice to also watch him exploring this landscape with you and imagining kind of um, that movement between, you know, we think about him maybe um, moving from China to the United States, but then there was also this interesting um, movement that we watch him take with you from New York to Kansas and watching this kind of movement into the Western landscape, which um you know being here in st louis and so close to where where you were shooting a lot of the film um i think was a it's it's kind of giving me a a moment to think about what it's what the midwest particularly in maybe his imagination or the larger cultural imagination um when we think about kind of like east west relations and specifically here like a, a west midwest relationship <laughs> um and just as a kind of brief uh, personal story or, or kind of where I'm coming from. So I work at the Contemporary Art Museum and we have an exhibition up right now by an artist from St. Louis, um, Yashin Kuo. And Yashin made a, a series of paintings that is an exhibition called Western Venom. And in these paintings, he has this kind of cowboy persona that he says is not necessarily really himself, but it represents kind of this larger struggle of being Asian American and trying to find your place within American culture and some of those kind of like large looming cultural myths that we have about American culture and who's kind of allowed in and who's maybe not always allowed in. Um, and so it was interesting to, you know, we've been thinking about that since Yaoshin's work is up right now. And so to watch this film and watch um, Zhang Hung to go through the same kind of landscape and go through some of these kind of symbols and, and mythologies. It just was such a nice dialogue between the two. And so I'm wondering with all of that kind of context setting, um, I wonder if you can talk to us a little bit about what your experience of coming to the Midwest and being in the kind of plains of Kansas and really thinking about like the West in that sense as um, as kind of a, a, a imaginary that occupies so many, in so many different ways in, in our imagination. Could you speak to what that maybe means to you or to what you've observed that's meant to Hong Tu and, um, and what your experience was like filming in Kansas? Having been in the States for um, about eight years and I have a struggle to define uh, who I am and where should I belong to, so especially given to this year with the pandemic, I think that uh, existentialism question has been um, always on my mind. Mm -hmm. So when I was filming this one, um, when I especially when I was in the Kansas um, in the tall grass uh, prairie, I actually didn't realize I was in the States or in China or anywhere else. I'm just um, in this place. Um, I'm living and breathing with this bison, these bisons and mm. on the earth. But that's just me. Um, I don't know how Hong Tu th thought about it because um, she told me that, um, because at that time Hong Tu wasn't doing anything, doing any art for like four years. That's and when great. we were in, when we uh, went to Kansas for his first solo exhibitions at the Beach Museum in Kansas State University, um, we got the chance to see the bisons. And then he realized, oh, this is actually my second time to see the bison after 60 years. Like my first time saw this one is actually in Beijing when I was 16. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's actually amazing. Cause the second time we saw this after 16 years and so many things been happened over the past decades. And I think that's, the re that's why he wanted to start a new series about bison. But at first I thought about, um, is it because you've been here for long and as an immigrant, as an artist, um, is bison mean something to you or does Kansas mean something to you, especially for this art? And he told me that the identity part wasn't the first thing pop up to him. Like we share kind of the same thing that we're just um, human being, not even just artists, like we're just all people. We live on the earth and look what we have done to um, are the living things because um, animals and environmental issues has been a big, another big topic, topic to Hong Tu because he's been making a few series about pollutions, um, especially water pollution.
So from that time, he was doing、um, about the pollution part, and he used it with calligraphy, with the t-、um, traditional Chinese、um, water painting, and then he moved on to、um, using different animals to symbolize、um, what can we see from if we are not human? How can we know about this、um, world from the animals' perspective? That's what he. He's been doing that for a while, but the bison part would be kind of an extension or a continuum of what he wanted to express and what what he thought about this、um, the world. Yeah.、Mm. Thank you. You know, it's really interesting to think about the the coming back to this、um, bison after seeing not seeing it for so long and the way that these kind of layers of history, you know, stay with us and they they live in the present. Um, and it made, makes me think about the poem that Hong Tu shares at the end of the film,、um, which I tried to write down to remember.、Um, he says it's important to learn from the history where your knowledge came from, but you must let go what you've learned in order to create your own history. And that really struck me in terms of thinking about how not only what we have mentioned earlier about how this kind of like heavy social and personal history can loom in our lives and how we kind of process that, but actually how we liberate ourselves from being tied to it to create something new, especially as artists, as filmmakers.、Um, there's this incredible gift that you give to the world of helping us imagine the world that we want to live in. So I wanted to close with asking you how, as a filmmaker, you find the process of making films as a sort of、um, liberatory or or sort of opening up process. Do you find,、um, even if you're working with, you know, artifacts of history or needing to do research, do you find yourself?、Um, Trying to do what Hong Tu says and kind of、um, free yourself to create your own story or create your own history. I think at this moment it's actually very difficult for me to execute what Hong Tu was、um, trying to say. Like I'm like this is my first film, my thesis film, and I'm really grateful that it has been seen by many other people and got the great reactions, but. It's actually hard for me to not imitate what other people has done, and I mean I'm trying to、um, get to that level, but you know there's still. So I would say for my next film, because I was I was doing for my second film, like I was trying to、um, do something more experimental. I try not to.、Um, I try not to put that many. Others people's、um, style or what I've learned in the past, but that's something that、um, I still need to learn. There's still a long way for me to learn how to get to find my voice or find my style or as an artist, what is the what is the story that I wanted to tell or through what kind of landscape, what kind of lens or what kind of like. Arts that I wanted to present. It could be、um, just story, or it could be like、um, a written part. It could be something else other than just、uh, moving image. I think that's something that I wanted to explore, and maybe I will make some mistake, but I feel like. Well, we're so excited to see what comes next for you. I mean, I think it、um, it bodes very well for the way that you'll be creating your own path and forging your own path with what you shared with us and before he starts. So, thank you for your time. Thank you for your work, and we look forward to seeing what's next.